Nature sets the rules out here, with its wild winds, raging waters, and freezing temperatures. We're off the coast of the Western Antarctic Peninsula on the last leg of a three-month-long Greenpeace expedition to raise awareness about the need to create ocean sanctuaries and fishing buffer zones within these waters. The, the Antarctic is a, is, is, is a cooling chamber that mitigates the effects of climate change. And what happens here is having an effect on the climate of, of the planet. The ocean currents are driven by the cold waters of the Antarctic. This entire region, from its waters to its seabed to its wildlife, is central to the battle against our planet's dangerously changing climate. Because it's what's called a carbon sink, a place where the carbon dioxide we emit into the atmosphere is held, making the planet habitable. And that's more crucial now for this amazing ecosystem than ever before. Scientists say rising global temperatures are causing Antarctica to lose about 183 billion tons of ice each year, the largest decline in sea ice in 1,500 years. <laughs> this is the awesome site of a whale feeding frenzy on krill, and beneath the surface lies so much more. Krill is a keystone species, holding the entire Antarctic food chain together. But krill is at an all-time low, in part because of rising ocean temperatures and melting ice. If the krill continue to decline, it could be a problem not only for the Antarctic, but for the entire planet. Because scientists are discovering that this shrimp-like crustacean actually help capture carbon dioxide emissions, the main culprit behind warming waters and rising sea levels. Here's how it works. Algae absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Krill feeds on the carbon-rich algae, and as they fill up, they sink to the bottom, where they rain down their carbon-rich fecal matter into the icy Antarctic Ocean's depths. There, since cold water holds more carbon than warm, carbon can be stored in this liquid deep freeze for millennia. And scientists have now discovered that krill swim to and deposit their fecal pellets in even deeper depths than previously anticipated which means they trap even more carbon than previously thought, a lot more. The extra depth these tiny creatures swim to in the Antarctic is believed to offset the carbon emissions of the entire United Kingdom and benefit other parts of the ecosystem in the process. Now we know that the, the carbon sinks and goes to the bottom where there is like a, a, like a very, very diverse communities so that they are able to use to capture this carbon and they use it, or, or sometimes they make it available for other organisms. What you're basically saying is that the actual organisms that live on the ocean floor are in and of themselves also a carbon storage facility yeah, yeah, to a certain degree. Yeah, yeah, basically that, that, that's the way it works. But the sense that the Antarctic is pristine is deceptive. It's already being threatened by us. Dr. Marcelo Gonzalez shows us what they found in some of the Antarctic clams they tested. You can observe this uh, material, the red material, is a uh, plastic, and also we can observe fiber, 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 fibers. And so this was found in. This is found in the, in the intestine of the Antarctic clam. And if this is what scientists are finding here, imagine what there could be in oceans and seas closer to our dining tables. The microplastics found could be due to the human presence in Antarctica, but Dr. Gonzalez suspects that they originated in other oceans, other continents. But further testing still needs to be done. Greenpeace also tested for microplastics and found elements in most samples they tested. And that's not the only toxic material in this remote region. We just take a walk around this little bay, find us a place that is untouched for the last, for the last weeks at least. Tilo Mac is going to take snow samples to be tested for PFAS, polyfluoroalkyl substances. PFAS are the chemicals used as stain and water repellent coating in things like outdoor gear. They're not biodegradable, which means that once they've been released, they stay in the environment forever. Greenpeace has been testing snow in remote areas for the last few years for traces of these toxic compounds. We already found it in, uh, in snow samples uh, of China. We found it uh, in snow samples uh, in Russia. 
uh, in the Alps, in, uh, in Europe, and it would be really outrageous if it would be already here in the Antarctic. Sadly, it is. And some of the freshly fallen snow samples suggest that the presence of these chemicals don't come from local sources, but were carried by the atmosphere. It's so beautiful and quiet, you almost don't even want to speak above a whisper. And there's two whales right there. This is absolutely unbelievable. See them? Nature here gives off a deceptive illusion of indestructibility. It's not. That is why Greenpeace is fiercely advocating for action at the source, but also for the creation of large-scale marine reserves to give the ecosystem here a fighting chance. Scientists are only just beginning to understand the scope of the Antarctic's role as a carbon sink and buffer against climate change. There is still time to protect it, not just for the beauty of its majestic creatures, but also because it could protect all of us. Arwa Damon, CNN, The Antarctic.